I just want to say um, I've already had a few interact testing ground in terms of um, not only your job, but then when probably what, what, whatever you will interface with town meeting, which is a whole other facet. Um, and the town manager um, has um, held you in high regard in terms of you joining his employment down at the town manager's office. So anybody who, who's there at home may say, who, who is this Eve and when, when might I interact with her? And it could possibly either be through the town manager's office or town meeting. Um, and it's going to be a really fun job, but it certainly is a very, uh, I shouldn't say taxing, but demanding demanding job <laughs> yeah. um, but just the brief conversations we've had over the phone you've been able to handle my uh, wit and <laughs> sometimes testing the boundaries um, you're definitely battle battle worry and ready and I look forward to what you'll do for us in the future thank you thank you mr. Greeley so welcome and thrilled to have you here so in your first two weeks, who's been more of a pain in your neck, Mrs. Mahan or Mr. Chapdelaine? <laughs> Mr. Grayley. Yeah. Um, everyone's been lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so you also are very politically astute, I see. Well, Eve, uh, for those, uh, there's millions watching at home tonight. Help them, uh, would you uh, describe what a management analyst does? How would you describe that role for us? Sure, so um, I'm working with the town manager and the deputy town manager uh, preparing the annual budget, um, the capital plan. I've already been to a capital plan meeting um, and to a finance meeting. Um, and I'll also be working um, with the buildings, craftsmen, um, um, working with our tenants um, and making sure all of our issues are worked out. That's great. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, we're lucky to have you, and I hope you're with us a very long time. Thank you. Thanks, Eve. Thank you. Thanks, Eve. Yeah. Thank you very much. M moving on, we have the consent agenda. Um, minutes of meetings, August 18th, 2014, and September 8th, 2014. Appointments of new election workers, Caitlin Buckley, Robert Buckley, and Marg Margaret Reiners. We have a request for a contractor drain layer license, a G Gullage Excavating, another request for a contractor drain layer license, NPD to Construction Corporation, as another one for from Perennial Landscape Corporation, and another for Sean Farrell Excavation. We have a request for a one day beer and wine license for September 29th at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall. Um, we have a request for a one day beer and wine license for October 11th at the Ro Robbins Memorial Town Hall. And a request for a one day all alcohol license for October 18th at Arlington Catholic High School. A request for a one day beer and wine license for October 23rd at the Masonic Hall. And a request for a one day beer and wine license for October 24th at Memorial Town Hall. Is anyone here to discuss any of those agenda items? Please come forward. Good evening, <coughs> Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce um, in regards to the um, Chamber Recognition Banquet, which is taking place on October 23rd. Uh, this event being held at the Masonic Lodge in Arlington is to recognize outstanding businesses in our town as well as other organizations. And in light of the tragedies and complex crimes that have unfolded in Arlington in the last two years, we will be honoring our local first responders, the fire and, and police department. So um, we would ask that you pass the request for the liquor license for that specific event. So. Thank you very much. Any questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, just so uh, thank you for coming. Uh, if someone wanted to find out more about the event, where would they go and what would they do? Uh, the chamber uh, website, uh, www.arlcc.org. Uh, you can find all the information there. Uh, tickets are available until October 18th, I believe. And um, <clears throat> they are have early bird pricing until the 4th. So. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would any, yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, and this is going to slow me down because this is brand new. Um, just on two of the contractor drain layer licenses, there are four. Mm -hmm. Three of the four reference the fact that they have, um, they answered yes, we have um, done work in other municipalities. And then the next question to that is if yes, pre please provide letters. Um, 
so just I guess to Mrs. Sullivan just to follow up administratively in terms of housekeeping um, the applications by NPD and Farrell um, both stated uh, the municipalities they worked in but did not include um, any letters from those municipalities the other one of the four that's answered yes to that question did include um, the letters then the other thing is and this is where it's going to slow me down oh, on um, I'm going to assume that the request for a one day beer and wine license on October 11th for the 50th reunion they have 7 to 10 and they change it to 630 to 11 I'm just assuming that's going to be p.m. they just didn't put a.m. or p.m. I, I know that's a so, sort of small thing and that was the only other thing on consent agenda so if we could just clarify those two housekeeping issues okay okay thank you any further comment yes Mr. move Chair. approval second we have a uh, motion a second um, I will say I'm going to abstain from the minutes of meetings um, August 18 2014 as I was out of town on that day um, but Either way, with the motion and second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. But I have to abstain for the September 8th, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Grayley. <laughs> Moving on to our public hearing. In star petition, Maple Street to 75 Broadway, Richard Chiffon. Good Hello. evening. Hello. I'm Jacqueline Duffy on Star Electric. Hello. We would like to put in 59 feet of conduit on Maple Street, and that's to provide electric service to 75 Pleasant Street, the Boston Church of Christ. Thank you very much for being here. Do we have uh, any questions from the board? Move approval. Second. Is there any further discussion? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment on this item? Seeing none, we have a motion and second with uh, no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, appointments to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Melissa, please come forward. Lob, Lob. It's Lowby. Lowby. Thank you for being with us, Melissa. Hi. Can I, you please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got interested in TAC? And I'm a transportation planner by profession. I uh, recently retired in the end of April. I'm a long term resident of Arlington, I think. My professional skills are a good match for the work of the committee, and I would like to serve my town. Thank you so much. Do we have uh, any questions, comments from the board? I move approval, um, and thank you very, very much for your oh, willingness it's, to it's serve. It's my pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. And you have lots of time, I hope, right? Are you... um, <laughs> I don't know about lots. I, I have time, and um, I will allocate the time that um, is best for this. TAC is very thorough, and yeah. we're pleased with that. But mm -hmm. uh, thank you in advance I'm looking for forward your thoroughness. To it. Thank you. It was the uh, I'll, I'll, I'll second it, and I just want to say thank you for all of the public service you've done up until now. I see you've worked a long time for the uh, National Park Service, um, which I'm a big fan, yeah. and um, several other federal agencies. So thank you very much. We look forward um, to oh, benefiting well, from your experience. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion from anyone in the crowd? Seeing none, we have a uh, motion and a second all those in favor please say aye aye opposed thank you so much You're welcome. Thank, you. thank you moving forward uh, license and permits request for a common victual license uh, which was tabled from our last meeting Lisa's family pizzeria move to table it's actually um, sorry it's been withdrawn as of late today oh. uh, so that won't be coming forward thank you um, moving forward, request for a beer and wine license. Szechuan Dumpling, 1360 Mass Ave. Good evening. Good evening. Please, um, can you tell us a little bit about your application? Yeah, it's actually just a transfer. We recently <coughs> took over the Szechuan Dumpling on six, 1360 Mass Avenue. So we just take, we already get all the permit this morning. <laughs> and so we just, in the process to transfer the, their license to us. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. I uh, am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
tell you what I told them when you know when they appeared uh, the last time, which is, it isn't just the, the the their mistake wasn't how they trained people the first time when they got the license. Their mistake was how they trained new employees. And so you really have to make sure that you build a process that you train new employees about the rules. Or like everyone you taught today probably is going to do it right. But that person that you hire in a year or two years, they're going to be the person who's prone to making a mistake. So I, I strongly encourage you to build a new hire training process that includes um, alcohol training. Definitely. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further comment? Ms. Vaughn. Um, sometimes there's a maintenance plan inc included, but I think because you're just changing management that it's sort of inherent. But I just want to take advantage of the opportunity since it's not in there, um, along with my colleagues' remarks, that uh, the town does have bylaws regarding snow removal as well as trash waste removal. But I'm assuming since it's a transfer of management that you're aware of, of what they were doing before in compliance um, uh, in following with what the bylaw states that you will continue to do that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, would anyone in the audience like to comment on this? Seeing none, um, any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bring samples next time. <laughs> <laughs> Except, uh, moving on, citizens open forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or re request. Is anyone here for a citizens open forum? Seeing none, moving on. Traffic rules and orders uh, slash other business. Uh, number eight, we have a discussion for parking concerns for attendees of Madden America International Film Festival, which will be from October 9th to October 12th. And we will also have a request for a two one-day beer and wine licenses for um, October 9th at the Region Theater for Film Festival and October 12th at Town Hall for Gala, Dinner and Awards Assembly. Laura, please come forward. Good evening, Board of Selectmen. Hello. Uh, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about um, the film festival? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so Madden America is an organization based in, primarily in Cambridge um, and we are mostly an online newspaper uh, with the mission of rethinking psychiatry and the mental health system. Um, so we have bloggers from all over the world who write about mental health alternatives and all kinds of issues related to the topic. And we decided, we had been talking about it for a few years, and we decided to go ahead and make a film festival happen. So we picked the region, and um, so the festival will be a four-day event beginning Thursday evening going through Sunday evening with the same mission of rethinking psychiatry and the mental health system. So we have 30 films, uh, 39 speakers and panelists coming from eight countries who are all leading voices in mental health alternatives and rethinking things in the mental health system. So that's a bit about our festival. Very cool. Um, one, I'd like to thank you for choosing the region and Arlington to hold this. Um, two, I guess um, the your first request is to uh, consider some parking issues um, for the days of the festival. Um, we all received a report from um, the police department um, with some suggestions, um, one of which um, see, would be for your organization to purchase a block of permits um, from the
Okay. Well, please speak. Yeah. And I, I'm just wondering, um, what, what typically, I, I should have found this out ahead of time. Um, does anybody know how much typically is the one day um, permit if it is purchased in a block? There was a reference to a precedent here. Gee, I, you know, I, I just recall one other event, and I don't know off the top of my head because Stephen Gilligan gets involved with it. So um, I'd actually have to go back and check. I just don't know. Um, it wouldn't be for a whole day, you know. Yeah. Um, and, um, well, Friday, it looks like Friday and Saturday would pretty much be yeah. be the whole day, but, but Thursday would, 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 is really we're just talking two hours. So it's actually not an issue on Thursday, I think, as, mm -hmm. as I look at this. It's really just an issue on Friday and Saturday. Do you think that if, if you were to purchase the bulk you know, permits, you'd, you'd be able to administer that with your ticket sales to, uh, or in some other way through um, we, it, one of your representatives I, to, to, uh, to, to, to sell the permits? I, I would have to sit and think about that. It might be difficult to figure out the logistics of that, but I would definitely, I'd like, you know, I would like to like think that through because there might be a way to, because we're not tracking who's, how people are coming. So we, I don't think we'll know ahead of time who's coming in a right. car and that sort of thing. So it might, it might be. But to bit, have a representative in the lobby, perhaps, if you had a block of the, of the permits. Uh, that ahead could of be time. possible. Yes. I, I, I feel like that's probably the, the, the fairest way to, to charge the, um, the going rate, but not, but, but make the permits available so that, so that um, you, you're not stuck with that, that limit. We've run into this with some of the other film festivals where it's very difficult for people to run out in the middle of the festival and, you know, feed the meter again. And I, I don't think that that's, that's practical. So um, I, I feel like that the block of, of permits, um, if there were a way for us to work that out, would, would make the most sense. We've done something a little similar with the farmer's market um, previously, which um, I, I think this makes sense. I, I, I'd like to incent, you know, some, an event like this is bringing a lot of people into Arlington, and presumably I'm hoping that you'll encourage some of your attendees to uh, go eat at some of our restaurants, et cetera. I wrote out a page of every restaurant in Arlington Center mapped out with how many, the mileage, how far away <laughs> the region it is with the address and the phone number. and. So we definitely are really bringing awareness to what's around the theater. I love to hear that. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I just want to double check. Do I remember correctly that right now parking is uh, metered until 6 p.m. in that lot? That's correct. correct. So really even, so we're talking about Friday, the, so. realistically Thursday 4 to 6, Friday 8.30 to 6, Saturday 8.30 to 6. Um, next question is, do we have a sense on what our usage is, is during those time periods? Do we get full already or do we not get full uh, during those times? I know it's, our, our, I'm reasonably sure that it gets harder at dinner time because of the restaurant parking, but um, during the day on a weekday, I can't say I actually use that lot, so I don't know what the congestion level is. My recollection of the utilization, did you want to? No, you go right ahead. Of the utilization surveys that were done when the parking study yeah. was conducted is that Daytime, Thursday, Friday will, are not full, full. There is utilization, but they're not to capacity. It is in the evenings where there's more pressure on the capacity of the lots. Or the other thing, too, would be sports, at, like in Arlington Catholic. Yeah. In, in yeah. which case, you know, it, it's jam packed, right. but I don't know what their, that schedule is. Generally, also in the past, Stephen Gilligan um, wouldn't charge more than the going rate for, right. for the time. Um, and I actually think maybe he, he just caps it at a certain, you know, it doesn't go over, but sort of just caps it as, you know, I don't know. Uh, just one, I'm leaning towards, um, I guess I, I'm, I'm leaning towards us just saying that we should suspend meter activity for those hours for those two days, not Thursday, but for Friday, Saturday. But I'm very interested in hearing what the rest of my colleagues have to say. You said completely suspend. For Friday and Saturday, yeah. Mr. Greeley, well, I'm open to it. I'm I'm all in favor of what Mr. Dunn just mentioned. Uh, I was because uh, we want obviously people to have a good experience in Arlington, and it takes care of the issue the chief raises, which is that it's unfair to other businesses, and the police don't know which cars are there for your festival over which cars are students or regular, you know, or employees or whatever. Um, I was going to recommend we refer. Uh, this to the to the parking clerk uh, and have her meet with Mr. Gilligan with our instructions. We want 
something. I was thinking of, do we open one row just for their part or something? But I, I, I'm, I would support the, let's do away with the fees for two days. Ms. Mahan. I would agree with that because it, it's less cumbersome in terms of uh, our parking enforcement unit uh, as well as um, in encouraging and aiding the event. So I would just say, just in the interest of um, expedition, uh, getting this done quickly, um, that just for, for those two days we just basically say we're going to waive, we're going to ask the parking enforcement unit not to go out there and tag everybody for three hours and then give them a ticket. Um, if that was Mr. Dunn's motion. I, I, I hadn't yet made a motion, uh, but in general, I was even saying not just enforce, I was just saying. Applies to everybody. If yes, somebody everybody. pulls in, everybody. it's not right. going to the everybody. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burley. Right, but have we done this for the International Film Festival, which, which is mostly at night, I understand, but are others going to now feel I mean, they they, just, they will be coming because they had problems last year. So I think that we we can expect to see them. And these are different dates, remind me, between this festival. I think and the they're incident. one weekend after ours, the ninth through the twelfth. So uh, I um, I think I kind of see where this is going, and I I completely agree that we should um, waive the parking for those two days for anyone who wants to come into Arlington. Um, the uh, the last thing I want you know, new visitors to town to deal with is those uh, meters. And uh, that would really, really be a bad, bad thing oh, for yeah, them to have to work. experience. Oh, yeah, um, I, I will say that um, so I, I am, I'm very open to this right now. And I think that after we, so we're doing a parking study right now. I know this isn't, um, you know, really pertinent to your uh, festival this year. But I think that this is a, a nice precedent that we can do for you know this year until we implement the center parking study and then I think we should reevaluate this precedent when that time comes around um, but with that said I didn't I, yes Ms. just one housekeeping matter and I, I'm just doing this because my day job I'm a court reporter and I always think of when incidences arise and if there's any sort of ambiguity and not clarity. Um, I just want to make sure that you're going to confirm that the October 12th, 2014 event at Town Hall, you have it listed as 7.30 to 11.30. I'm going to ask you if that's a.m. or p.m. P.m. Okay. That's fine, because it wasn't on the application there. And I know it sounds like I'm worrying I'm sorry. three times <laughs> beyond. No, it's no biggie, but I just want to make it clear um, just from a thinking forward. So it, it, it's October 12, 2014, 7.30 to 11, 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I move that we waive the parking fees in the municipal lot on Friday, October 10th and Saturday, October 11th with the subtext of um, we look forward to the parking study and reevaluating future requests in light of that new knowledge and not setting a true long-standing precedent on it. Second. We have a motion a second. Is anyone in the audience here to discuss this? Seeing none, um, any further discussion from the board? No. Um, so we have a motion a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing vote. And if you will stay with us for one more second. Do we have a motion or questions on part B of? Mr. That? Chairman? Yes. If I may? Yes, of course. And if, with uh, Laura's permission, just while we're here, I'm going to also make the motion we do the same thing for the International Film Festival the following weekend, details to follow. I don't know the exact timings or whatever, but let's, uh, let's be fair uh, if this is uh, the precedent we're going to set. Until, and clearly understanding this is being done because we're in the middle of a parking study and it's an excellent event and we want to help and we want to welcome people to Arlington. But you've got to tell them we'll be paying them the next time they come in here for it, uh, or come after 6 o'clock. Do, do so, you want me to hold that off till later? I was going to say it's not on the agenda. Right. And yeah. Well, that's all right. But no, they I can, can come still in make the, the motion. Right, yeah. but I'm just. Okay, so move approval on the uh, common, the, uh, one, the two one day beer and wine license requests, right? Is it two? Two. Yeah. Second. We have a motion. Marianne? Um, just clarification this is for the lot and not for surrounding streets. 
for you know this is just for lot parking. Fees. Yeah. 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 Correct. Parking okay. I just fees. wanted to make sure yeah. before we send out a letter. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second for uh, two one-day beer and wine licenses. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say. It's Mad in America International Film Festival dot com. Next, the next meetings will be in time for the uh, International Film Festival. If it's, well, well, if do, we ask do you anticipate them requesting? Yeah, we can request ask. Yeah, ask yeah. They should make the request. Yeah, I think just thinking some people that might. Okay. I've uh, mentioned it to them, so, so I'll between, mention it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Moving on, we have a request for three um, spaces on street overnight parking. 17 Linwood Street, Deborah Riccardi. If it pleases the board, may I speak on behalf of Deborah Riccardi? I'm the tenant at 17 Linwood. I'm Sharon Keeley. Sure. Great, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for your consideration of this request. Uh, I grew up in Arlington. I've recently moved back to Arlington. My parents live here, my grandparents live here. And I've recently moved to 17 Linwood. There currently isn't a driveway at this location and what we're requesting is that uh, we, we purchase the parking permits that uh, grant us parking overnight in the lots, but with our, it, that we're able to park on the street at 17 Linwood because the lots are farther away and myself and my two, uh, my fellow roommates, um, are consistently going in and out. One of us manages a business here in Arlington, the other is a state worker, and I manage uh, multiple businesses in New Hampshire, so I come and go all the time and I carry my office around with me, so it's a lot to carry. So our request is that as three younger women uh, in Arlington that we, have these, we can purchase these parking permits and be able to uh, park on the street so we're not par walking late at night to the, to the lots. Thank you um, very much for that. Questions, comments from the board? Ms. Mon. Um, we do have some information that um, at this one address, 17 Linwood, there was a request for, a previous request for the, I guess, the owner's uh, daughter to park overnight on the street, and we did grant that under the hardship rules. Um, I'm not sure in terms of zoning, I now understand that there's now three more tenants living at that one street address. We do have um, some correspondence from the police and fire departments that they do have objections to this um, and do refer you to the Gibbs Street parking lot. We can't get in the business, in my personal opinion, in terms of um, owners of single family homes, you know, how, how they rent them out uh, and how many tenants they um, take in. but that onus sort of does not fall on us. So uh, upon the recommendations of the police and fire department, I would recommend no action. Thank you. Second. Uh, I second. So uh, it's a difficult uh, fairly regularly, and um, we fairly regularly say no. And part of the, one of the reasons that I vote no when I do it is because we put it on the town ballot relatively recently. Do you want on-street parking in Arlington? And uh, but the voters rejected putting on-street parking in Arlington by it was it was like 30 points or 28 points or something like that. Like I mean, the people really don't want on-street parking, and uh, they know the, you know the voters know full well that in particular in the more dense parts of our town that there isn't as much parking, and so in, our policy is tending to be. Um, if you can't, if I understand your tenant, but the landlord needs to put in a driveway, and until the landlord puts in it, because and if the landlord can't put in a driveway, and there, then we'd refer you to a local parking lot. That, and if you were too far from that, then we'd be talking about like whether or not you're physically capable. Unfortunately, there's just you're as an able-bodied person in a place where you could build a driveway. I'm going to follow the voters and say no. Sorry. Thank you. So. Um, I, 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 Mr. Greeley? Well, the other problem, with that, that would be now four spaces in front of one mm -hmm. house. Now they're going to be moving into their, in front of their neighbors' uh, homes to allow this, right? Yeah. You, can, you have to come to the microphone, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Deborah Riccardi. Um, one of, um, you referred to, um, 
the fact that you had given um, my daughter, which who is Eleanor Riccardi, um, uh, our, our permission to park. She's no longer using that because she's uh, no longer here in Arlington. So that eliminates um, um, that particular one. And I am asking, requesting for the three of them, and I understand um, that that you voted. However, um, there is only, what, one other um, resident on the street that has a sticker where that she could park overnight because she also has nowhere to park. And and for me, I'm thinking, I'm hoping this, if, if you would agree, if this could be temporary for them, just to give me time to be able to afford to put a driveway in. This would be, this is my first time really renting out um, my two family home on Linwood Street. And, um, you know, because of these young ladies, you know, I'm just getting started. And this isn't um, gonna be completely permanent. It's just um, until such time I get established and get going here in Arlington. I've been living here for about 30 years. I've never, you know, I've always, you know, um, like I said, as an able-bodied person walk, you know, um, uh, to my uh, vehicle. But um, we were hoping that you would please consider. Mm -hmm. You know, I. I, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the time that, of course, overnight parking is, is, is very short. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, and then our park is completely bombarded by cars from like 7 a.m. until 6 in the evening year-round because of the church because of the baseball field on Linwood Street so we're constantly walking back and forth whether it be grocery or anything um, because we have nowhere to park I am um, no I, I certainly understand what you're saying um, but you know when it comes down to even though if it might be temporary I, I think that the Gibbs school is an appropriate temporary parking um, assignment for your um, new residents mm -hmm. and I um, potentially moving forward um, if you do seek to you know put in a driveway then um, I'm sure they'll be happier tenants but um, I think I'm gonna go with my colleagues and um, we are not going to grant these parking spots I'm sorry um, but we have a is that there anyone else here to talk about this issue yes you can come forward Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so we have a uh, motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, five nothing. Sorry, ladies. Moving on, we have a uh, busking administrative fee from our town council, Doug Heim. Uh, good evening, members of the board. As you may recall we've had uh, some applications uh, for busking permits under the board's relatively new uh, busking uh, regulations. Uh, at the request of members of the board, my office did some research into what the permitting fees were around in the communities around Massachusetts. We found a pretty diverse uh, set of uh, permitting uh, fees associated with this type of activity in part because the type of activity that we're talking about and how much it's expected to bring to the community in terms of economic development, stuff like that varies from place to place. But uh, the long and short of it is, is that we found fees ranging from $10 to $40 in the average community, whereas your license is uh, for an entire year. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to set a fee within that range. Um, and my understanding is the lowest uh, fee that we currently uh, charge for this, an, any analogous license is around $25. So it, it's, it's my recommendation that if you're talking about a year long license for busking, that uh, the board consider a uh, fee that's around that number or potentially even a little bit lower, um, especially where we're talking about most of the towns and municipalities that our charging fees are between that $10 and $40 range. Thank you, Doug. Um, I guess I'll open this up to the board and like to hear what everyone's thinking on it. Yeah, Doug. I guess it seems to me that some, some of the um, licenses that we issue have uh, administrative costs from, some, like, from our, some of our public safety officials and stuff like that. This one, I don't think we're planning on any sort of thing like that. So it's our, it's, you know, Marianne's time and, and so on. Um, I, I'm definitely leaning towards the lower end. I don't know where everyone else is. 
Yes, Mr. Chair. Well, that's my sense too, because we, you know, we we made this a pretty streamlined uh, process. I think in the regulations that this board adopted, where essentially the whole reason for the for the permit is just to confirm that somebody who's, who's getting it has received an acknowledged receipt of the uh, the rules around it. We're not doing any of the the extra checks or or whatnot. So it's whatever it costs to print the permit, which presumably we can print up on letterhead in the office, I would, I would think. Um, so I, I would tend towards the lower end also. Um, the, I mean, I, I would, I, I'm prepared to move $10 for the, for the fee on this. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions? Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, just where this will be a permit that's issued yearly, um, I would be interested in if Mrs. Sullivan or, or the town manager or town council um, has a su suggestion that what is the year? Um, will it be October 1st to October 1st? Will it be something retroactive and then it'll be January 1st to January 1st or December 31st to December 31st? With all the other licenses that we give out, what, what is it no typically? What makes best sense for you all? Till January 1st is the way we currently do it. Um, it keeps it easy going that way, but it could be anything you want. So I, I don't think ask. it's stipulated in the policy. Yeah. Is it if I yeah, would the ask policy you. does not state, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. The policy doesn't state what the yearly license, when it will commence. I, I would like to, in concert with everything else, be January 1st, January 1st, with the exception that I believe we have a request before us right now, um, so that we vote January 1st to January 1st is the calendar year or the busking year in concert with other licenses with the exception that in the interim it's between now and december 31st that's sort of a uh in, what's the word i'm trying to think of prorated license or whatever prorated yeah that's the word yeah. something like that you know what i'm trying to say yeah. i'm trying to make it so all the licenses come up and are due at the same time but also acknowledging the fact that we do have one busking request before us right now they shouldn't have to wait till january 1st oh, yeah. right. and if any right. others come in mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Greeley. So, uh, if uh, Mr. Kerr would allow, I'd like to amend his to, we charge $12 for January 1st to January 1st, and prorate and allow and charge $3 to the individual who's requested the busking license for the rest of the year. Yeah. That's okay. That makes you. math, yeah, the math easy. Yeah. It's acceptable. So, see, I couldn't do the math dividing 12 by 10. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I need a calculator on this. Saying thing. anything? It's good. It's good. You remember Marie's watching this, so go ahead. So, I've, it seems like we're all at an agreement. Um, we have a motion from Mr. Greeley. Is there a second? Second. Well, it's Mr. Kiro's motion. Oh, my motion. I. I uh, yeah, Mr. Kiro's motion amended. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five nothing. Thank you. Moving on. Intermunicipal agreement, yard waste disposal. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, simply asking for the board's authorization to sign and execute this intermunicipal agreement with Lexington, which uh, really just memorializes an already existing arrangement we have with Lexington to bring our yard waste and Christmas trees uh, for disposal to Lexington. We've been going there uh, for a number of years as long as I've been here. Uh, it's a very good arrangement. Uh, we deem it to be a good price. Uh, in, in fact, uh, when the DPW director reached out to JRM to get a price uh, for yard waste, they couldn't even give us a price. Uh, so based on proximity in Lexington, again, what we deem to be fair, and giving us some cost certainty for this fiscal year or next fiscal year, uh, we deem it to be a good deal for the town, and we ask for your authorization to execute the agreement. So moved. We have a second. motion and a second. Um, yes, Ms. Mahan. Just one quick question. Um, I'm going to assume by the fact that um, it's set 4,000 tons of yard waste um, <clears throat> in terms of tonnage uh, is in concert with past years. I'm assuming that whatever past years is, th that's that number is probably 500 to 1,000 more than it actually was. And I was just curious that if for some reason we had 4,500, what that would mean. So it's, uh, it's, it's in concert really with two things. It, it is in concert with our prior history, but it also is the limit of what they can accept from us. Oh, okay. If they go over 4,000 based on their space and other, you know, their own mm -hmm. composting, their own yard waste, they will be in a bit of a crunch. So our high year was last year, <clears throat> and that was um, 3986. I was going to say, you're but, close with the four. But yeah. that was 1,500 from Microburst and Sandy. 
Oh, so a lot okay. of that All added right. to it. Okay. Uh, the past yardway season was 3,500 pounds. Okay. A ton, excuse me. So we're, we're, we are in that ballpark a little bit below 4,000. If there was another big event, we'd have something to deal with, but we are. I apologize. I noticed I was looking at last year and I saw 39 and then I saw the 4,000 limit, but yeah. I forgot about the microphones. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Seeing that we have a motion a second. I um, thank you for putting this on, Adam. I you know, really like it when we get to vote on working with other, other communities. I think that's a um, really good practice to follow, and I look forward to doing more of it. Um, but either way, uh, we have with the motion a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing vote. Moving on. Discussion, uh, the disposition of 1207 Mass Ave. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so earlier this year, the board uh, voted to have a working group take a look at 1207 Mass Ave, formerly known as the Disabled American Veterans Club or the DAV, and determine a process for what the board would do to use the property, dispose of the property, or figure out a plan for the property. So a working group of uh, Selectman Dunn, Selectman Byrne, myself, Town Council Doug Heim and former veterans agent Bill McCarthy met several times over the past year, including a tour of the property. Uh, with I think uh, more board members were there as well. Um, I haven't been to it. You haven't been in there yet. But I um, used to hang around there. I kind of know. You know, you know, you know the place. Uh, so uh, after a number of discussions, after um, sort of independently learning that the DAV itself was vacating the property, um, and that and that guided our decision, at least in terms of our timeline, we came to a recommendation of wanting to come back to the board and say, uh, let's do a public hearing. And I'm recommending that that public hearing be at the next selectman's meeting. Uh, so we can talk about that, publicize it, get people in here uh, to give feedback on what use they'd like to see in the property. Uh, from there, uh, take public feedback, take the general board's feedback, make a decision on whether or not the board wants to go out for lease or sale of the property, uh, draft an RFP accordingly. If the board decides to lease it uh, or want to lease it, we'll draft an RFP that has criteria in it to, to lease it to the type of entity that we want to lease it to, and we'll go through that process. If the board decides that it wants to sell the property, we'll again draft an RFP accordingly uh, and have it timed so that town meeting can vote to approve the sale uh, as part of the process. Uh, I know I put in my memo uh, that I myself feel as though disposing of the property and using the proceeds to go towards future school construction needs uh, would be a prudent approach, but I don't want that to be the bias, uh, you know, the final decision, but that's where I'm coming from. So I, I guess with that, what I'm looking for is potential discussion uh, tonight from the board, but uh, approval of this uh, timeline that we've laid out to move forward. Okay. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, so as Adam mentioned, um, both Selectman Dunn and I were on um, this committee, and I, I don't want to speak for Dan, but I, I do really like this uh, process. I think it's open. I think it will give the community a say in um, you know, what, what to do with this uh, town property, and I think it's a, um, it's a nice approach. But um, that being said, Mr. Grayley. Well, Mr. Dunn's hand was up. Oh, he served on the committee. I don't know whether he'd like to speak first. Um, I want to argue with someone, so. But all right. Well, then, all right. Then I'll. I'll uh, I thank you, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm definitely. I, 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 I like the process that we're talking about here. I, I absolutely support it. I very much look forward to doing the public hearing and hearing uh, more. I'm particularly very interested in hearing from the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee to make sure that uh, to hear what the, that they agree. Um, I am interested in what the school committee says, but at the same time, I strongly suspect that anything that they say that anything we say the funds will be used towards, you know, helping build the school is unlikely to be meet with their opposition. Um, I, def I, I also am leaning towards sale uh, I, with an open mind. I'm leaning towards sale. Having viewed the property, it's hard for me to imagine it being leased without significant investment. And once you start talking about that investment, then you're talking about being a developer. And I don't like the town being in the business of being in a developer. I think we should, um, you know, there are other people who are better at it than we are. So I, I, I like the process and um, I, I, yeah. 
Those are my thoughts. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, I don't want to really argue with anybody. I, I like the process too, I really like the people involved. A couple of questions though. It's the options are for sale and or maybe to lease. Why is not a third option town use it? I understood at one point we talked about maybe veteran services going in there. Um, so no, that, why that, did you take that off the table, I guess would be my first question. Uh, I, I'm, and I apologize, I should have included that in my, my remarks. Uh, when we realize the level of investment that would be necessary to get it up to par for town use, uh, and I know that's what drove my decision, and I don't want to speak for the other members, but I, I think that's what drove the group's decision. Okay. okay. It was just Same thing it, in such a level of disrepair. Yeah. Um, to, I'm a little leery about saying the funds would automatically go to school building projects. I mean, I, I think we should separate that out. I think those are two decisions, aren't they? Uh, no, I, I would agree, but Mr. I, I guess uh, I would, I, 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 yes, but I would strongly, I, I suspect I would strongly object to anything other than a capital use. Personally, yes. okay, yes. yeah, yes. okay. Because we're selling yep. the capital, we're selling capital. So it's talking about capital as opposed to school, right. yes. Because as we know, yep. once it's gone, it's gone. But yep. yeah, so I, I would agree. Um, okay. But my third question is, in uh, ballpark. What might that property sell for? Just ballpark. We're not committing anything here. I, 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 I think I'd rather keep that uh, confidential based on the confidential appraisal that was provided to the board. J just to not we, harm. We have been provided that? Oh. To not harm the town's uh, potential bargaining position. It was a while ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's Thank you. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Yes. Um, I just want to. Um, only because I got a call today, and I, my understanding is that that building is now vacant. I got a call from somebody who felt that a new business had moved in there. So I just want to get it official on the record that as of right now, 1207 Mass Ave does or does not have any occupant. I was there a week ago, and there was no occupant. Okay, and, and no one from the town has signed. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I, I did notice the building next to it had a lot of activity this the past week. And that's and that, what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking the person was confused with and, and they stated the business and the business that, that they stated would be a <coughs> sort of alternative use of the use that it was before. So that's what I just wanted to make sure that as of right now, the uh, town owned building at 1207 Mass Ave does not have any occupants. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. I support the process also, and um, I think, you know, we know we've, we've got a few vacant commercial properties along that stretch, but I think opening this up to potential redevelopment maybe will help help to revitalize that that, uh, that stretch a bit as well. So um, uh, I'd say let's go forward. Sounds good. Um, I agree. So perhaps I'll, I'll work it out with Adam about how we'll go about the public hearing correct and, uh, yeah we'll report back you that a motion or at a selectman's meeting or you're talking about a separate public hearing so that that's uh, i think up for further discussion okay okay mm. do you want a motion to support this this process as recommended by the town manager um if if you'd like so move <laughs> do we have a second second motion and second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed five nothing Moving on, um, approval of board and manager goals. Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so before the board tonight are uh, what could be final goals for approval for both the board of selectmen and town manager. I, I believe every board member has had an opportunity to review and provide any feedback. Uh, if there are any other changes to be made tonight, we can certainly do that. Uh, but otherwise, if the board is prepared to adopt the goals, um, I would request that they consider doing so tonight. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Yes. I just have three things, and I'll make this really quick. As I, but it's going to be the difficulty, which I def definitely like this system, but there's extra clicks. I would ask my colleagues in the town manager um, on page two, um, under 3H, as in hello, where we're talking about the alewife if we could add the word federal, federal before Class B waterway. Um, and, and the only reason I say that is I know when I brought this up for discussion, I was citing the federal designation of a Class B waterway of the Alwife when the Charles River got that designation. 
um, <clears throat> from the federal government that sort of was the impetus to clean it up. And my motivation for that is to hopefully in the future when we go to CSO variance meetings or whatever that we can say that this is a, a federal class B waterway as recognized by the town of Arlington and the city of Cambridge. So if that's okay, if we could add that there. Unless the town manager or any of my no, colleagues. No, no, no. Okay. And then um, I just have a memory that on the next two items um, that we had this conversation, um, and maybe it should or should not be memorialized under the goals for um, the Board of Selectmen and town manager, the next one I'm going to say, which is on page three at 5F. Um, and this is where I'm going to have to go into it. My, my question is the conversation that we had regarding developing appropriate policies for the Novus agenda, Novus agenda and or any other hardware software um, program purchase that we make. And this is where I'm going to have a hard time with this. I'm trying to get into. So what I would ask the town manager is I thought we had a discussion um, that it would be a board goal and or perhaps inherent with the town manager that um, talking about IT technology transparency in terms of the board of agenda, I mean the, the board of selectmen agenda, that having taken that first step to accomplish that, which might be purchasing the Novus agenda or something else, that we would, part of our goals, um, discuss policies for implementing that. So I was just wondering under it, so under, fi under 5F, perhaps we could put implement electronic packets for the Board of Selectmen and develop appropriate policies and procedures? That would be if that's okay with everybody? Yeah, that's sure. Fine. Okay. And yeah. then um, on page... I'm sorry. Repeat that. Implement electronic packets for the Board of Selectmen. Sorry, Diane. And develop appropriate policies and develop procedures. Develop appropriate policies. Okay. In terms of what gets posted, who says what can be... Right. Just in terms of a so custodian know, that, of the, the information. That will be covered in 5C, but if you want to write it out, that's fine. That's part yeah, of it. Makes it make it, it makes like explicit. Table. Yeah. yeah. But, right, but... It's all right. And then... Um, this is just a sort of little pet peeve with me, so I, I don't know if it should go under... We probably should go under town manager, but I have it under, which I think this does, and again, this is where I, I can't do all the clicks. Page 5, 4A, I believe that's the town manager. Is that where I am on that? Yes. Okay. Is there any way we can put in a goal in terms of um, under the IT discussion um, establishing permanent Wi-Fi for the Board of Selectmen's office? To me, that's an attainable goal. I kind of want to get it written down only because I've had the, the conversation since November of last year. Would you be willing to? I, so I, it's that is a sort of a sub goal of the three year IT, uh, IT strategic plan that's cited there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm happy to include it. I, I think it's a. It's, well, it's a you pretty, know, what, if you don't want to include it more than that, we've had this. We're again having the discussion, and I'm not trying to be so nitpicky. It's just, I you know. Originally was told November of last year would have Wi-Fi and then January and then June and then September. So I was just wondering maybe if you could commit to a certain date even by the end of the year. Or we've just had the conversation and that's enough. Um, I'm happy to include it as a goal for specifically but the board To Selectman's me it's a really office. attainable goal. And, and I only say that because I came into the Selectman's office this morning and I had two issues that I thought maybe it was just something that wasn't included that we had and I wasn't thinking and when I went to pull up under the the drain layers license and another one it wasn't until I said oh my gosh there's no Wi-Fi in here I can't do that that's all I just want to by the end of this year we have Wi-Fi that's all thank you any other comments seeing none um, <clears throat> did we have a mo did we have a motion in a second I thought. I'm yeah, okay. So we have a motion, a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five nothing. Next, uh, Mr. Greeley, discussion on the selectmen's handbook. Well, since you finally approved it, let's get started on that uh, in a timely fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne, do we have? Do we have that? The. Uh, um, it was part. Of contents. I don't have it with me right now. It was part of the board info that was sent. It, it was emailed on Friday. No, I don't have it. Okay. Do you want, I can get uh, that one. No, do the rest of you have it? Yeah, it was emailed. I can on. pull it up. Yeah. I mean, I don't have it in front you, of me. Can we hear? Here? Uh, no, it's not on here. It was pull it up on your email. It's in an email. Yeah. 
Can I piggyback on that? One of the requests. I'm sorry, I was supposed to have that out tonight. No, that's okay. Yeah, we were going to put it on the desk. Yeah. I was. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. One of the requests that um, I made to Adam K. Um, and he was discussing with the town manager is right now we get information two different ways or two different places. We get the information Monday night, Board of Selectmen's meeting, all this is contained. And then in the past, when it was an off Board of Selectmen not a week yeah. that we didn't have a meeting, we would get that manila packet of correspondence received, which would right. have included that, right. delivered to our house. And what we get now is we get an email on Thursday um, from Fran or Marianne with that information. And one of the requests I had made to Adam Kay and the town manager is, is there any way, similar to what happened right now, that that information um, perhaps still emailed to us, but could also be something that we could retrieve um, from this NOVA system. And, and this would be a case in point, where it was something that was emailed to everybody on Thursday in place of the police delivering that manila packet on an off selectman's meeting. And it seemed like that might have been a, a doable or agreeable. I think it's a very good idea. Okay. Well, going back to Mr. Greeley. Yeah, so, um, I'm sorry, I, 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 didn't, I have not yet opened and read through that secondary packet. I've only been through the tonight's agenda and stuff, and as I said, I thought it was going to be on the desk. But it, it's not a big deal that it's not. I just wanted to start this discussion. I mean, as you know, for a while, this has been uh, a goal that I, I agreed to undertake. And the more I've gotten into it, the more I realize it's, uh, it's going to be quite a project. I mean, I believe it's going to take us six months to a year to put this together. But in doing so, we will review every policy uh, of, the, of this Board of Selectmen so that we can uh, first review the policy and uh, pull together all the materials on that policy and uh, make whatever recommendations or any changes that the Board thinks is necessary but the goal is, in the end, to have uh, uh, two, uh, two basic notebooks, a, a, a handbook for all of us, for new board members, for any member of the public. Marianne has talked about how much this will also help organize the office out back from there, because everything at this point is piecemeal because of the nature of what we do, and we'll just update it as, as we go along. So the goal is that I would bring to this board each meeting a section of this handbook. But the first thing I would ask is that you take this agenda, which uh, the uh, table of contents, if you will, and don't really need comments on it tonight, but I'd like to ask you to think about it to bring comments, and if you have any, certainly glad to hear them at this point, to the next meeting. And also at the next meeting, uh, probably bring you the first uh, section on the introduction on the um, uh, roles and responsibilities <coughs> of this board, uh, selection of chairman, uh, th things such as that, uh, a little history of the Board of Selectmen to, to open it up with. But uh, each, each meeting, the goal would be to have sent you in advance, let's say it's the alcohol policy, to have sent that to you at, at least a week in advance of the meeting, to give you all a chance to read what uh, I'm recommending at this point, although I'm getting a lot of uh, advice from uh, Mr. Byrne, from uh, Mr. Heim, from Marianne Sullivan and Andrew Flanagan, because in the end, this is going to be put before you for approval uh, by you, and I believe the town manager also needs to approve this as well. Uh, but we can vote on sections as we go along, and as we complete a section, that will be now out in the selectman's office, and we'll build the book that way. But that's why I say I think it's going to take, you know, we don't really have anything that describes our parking responsibilities, uh, the, uh, how to determine handicapped spaces. I mean, the, there are some bylaws and other things. But we're going to try and coordinate all of that. But it, it's it's much more of an undertaking than I thought it was originally going to be. But uh, it's more the process. Are you comfortable with this? Uh, that you know, I'll bring each week, each meeting, and what we what we really need to try and do is not spend an hour of the meeting on things if we can, because most of these policies do exist. It is us um, encapsulating them. Is that the right word, Doug? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then take this opportunity for anything, like on the alcohol, Steve, uh, the, uh, the sidewalk. Uh, do we want to 
change that, right? It, it, that may be a separate issue, but for example, if it were, we've approved the alcohol policy, let's say, now at a future meeting, something, we change that policy, well, that will be updated in the handbook, and the handbook will show last updated on whatever date of that meeting that it was, but a source that will combine everything together into one. So, you see what we're proposing at this point, looked at a couple others, looked at some codes of conduct, uh, tried to get, but we're unique. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Joe uh, uh, pointed me to the uh, school committees, and uh, I'm going to hope we aren't as complicated as that, Joe. Uh, I mean, no offense, uh, but uh, Section 3B, Paragraph F2, uh, I'm hoping not to, uh, you know, that may turn out to be that way, but... So we approve it in, in sections, and then in the end, we'll, we'll have a final vote on it. But I ask your patience. I really do think it's going to be a year to put this all together. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your work on this, Mr. <coughs> Curley. And I, I'm thrilled that this is, this is happening. I know, um, yeah. and, I, and I like what I see so far, laying out kind of the general charter and some of the governance issues as well as some of the issues that are of direct import to the people who come before us and the types of policies. I would ask that we all think of this, though, not as one discrete project, but, but maybe as you think about it, maybe putting for our consideration some kind of a process where it will be continually renewed. Perhaps, for example, one way to do it is, is if there is a standing uh, subcommittee of the board, a, a policies and procedures subcommittee, that would have as a responsibility to look at a third of the manual each year, which kind of spans the, the natural length of, of tenure for, for, yeah. for board members here, and proactively bring forward uh, things so that we're not having to open it up in, in reaction to specific issues, sometimes proactively looking at that, you, we find that things are stale. So as you're thinking of the governance issues to present to this board to, uh, to approve in the first version of this, this book, if you can think of a, of a procedure, that would work for its continuous upkeep. So we're not thinking of it as just one, it's finished, it's, it's never finished, it's a living document. Not. But I, but uh, thank you, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I please. agree. And I was going to recommend at the end of it that it be reviewed every certain period of time. But I, I hope we put it together in such a way that this is what exists at this moment. Right. And that if we make any changes uh, to the policy or whatever, uh, I mean, first we have to come to agreement on the alcohol, on the parking policy, on vigilance license, on taxi licenses, things that you all know we spend an awful lot of time on. So, but I agree, yes, I, I do. I, I believe the last time this was looked at was in the early 80s. Wow. I think things have changed a bit since then, mm. then so. Well, thank you. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any your hand? Sorry. Uh, I think it's great. That, I, I think that, and uh, the concept of doing it in, bit, in pieces, I think is absolutely the right way to attack it, and I, yeah. I heartily endorse that. Great. Any further comments? Seeing none, um, I agree that this is a um, very important endeavor, and um, look forward to it. I appreciate your very hard work and diligence on this, Mr. Grayley. Um, I might be grumpy the next day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so did we have a uh, motion to support? So move. And we, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, aye. Nothing? Nothing. <laughs> you, nothing. I, I have a lot of stuff, but I think I, well, no. no. I, I agree with, uh, wholeheartedly endorse what Mr. Grayley wants to do. I know when I first got on the board and I was kind of looking towards some sort of recourse or uh, something I could grasp onto in terms of um, rules and orders. Um, and I was told uh, that the, what we follow was the rules of uh, civility, decency, and common sense. Um, and I never could quite get that handbook um, <laughs> as an ally to, to, <laughs> for me. Um, do, do you think some of us were uncivil? And <laughs> so I definitely th think this is, uh, and, and I think I'll have more, and yeah. I welcome this. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting it down. And I think one of the things when you're a brand new selectman, there's a lot of learning curve and there's a lot of, you know, information out there. And I know all of us sitting here, something like that, we would have read and digested to the extent that we needed it. And I know that was something that I definitely w would have benefited from. But in terms of, um, I, and I have 
in an, it's sort of another life in terms of helping out in my transcriptionist role, um, type some of the school committees, quite a few of the school committees, policies, sub-policies, 1JAE345. I, I hope we don't get into that because I think once once we create this event, this uh, document that um, it basically will be the main tool that we have and, and maybe we set something that it's reviewed every two years or th whatever and or on an as needed basis. I, I don't necessarily, but we can discuss this in the future, but I kind of don't want to go down that road because then, it, you know, just in terms of our busy schedules and everything that we have, but I truly do welcome this um, and it, it will be a really good tool for um, any future selectmen as well as us putting it together. So I, I don't mean to be silent. No, I'm no, just no, no, to no I know, but, but I, I really just want you to, yeah, this process sounds fine. No, it does and, and I want to be, my, the way I view this is in a handbook, we would have like a one page description of alcohol policies. But the full policy would be in a second book, which would have all the bylaws and all the, uh, uh, Doug, help me, what else in that second? Uh, sure, I, th I think the, the, the way that uh, Mr. Greeley was sort of envisioning uh, this handbook versus a second book that's basically devoted to uh, permits and licenses is one book that states basic policy and serves as a uh, usable uh, reference manual for the selectmen, any other folks who need to use it public um, within the context of a meeting so that if somebody had an issue that they felt like they wanted to say, wait a second, I, I feel like we have something, we have a policy on this and I'm not sure this is consistent with it, they could easily navigate that within the scope of the meeting. It wouldn't necessarily be something that you'd feel like you're thumbing through a, a tome on this. But then we're going to have to have uh, more detailed things such as certain types of license applications that it would take up pages and pages and pages. And I think what Mr. Greeley has sort of wisely thought about is maybe segregating those things so that you have a highly detailed uh, piece that isn't necessarily for everyday use by everybody um, and a uh, type of handbook that would be usable and uh, uh, referenced fre more frequently by the selectmen within the context of the meetings. And on, on, on that score, on that score uh, with respect to the handbook or the sort of licensing and permitting piece of it, um, I, my office is going to be playing maybe a larger than usual administrative role in helping put this together. So if you guys have any, uh, if any of you have any individual things that you would like added to uh, the, uh, the um, table of contents or any specific comments, I think I'd be uh, uh, glad to have my office serve as a a, a, a point where we can receive information and comments and things like that in between meetings, which obviously would have to be more into towards public discussion. Thank you very much. Any further? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, moving on, a vote for our Nago Kakio um, letter report is. Um, what we determined it would be called. It, um, so this is a letter I drafted. I'm very welcome to any uh, changes you might have just to kind of lay out um, where we're at with our sister city relationship. Um, they, um, it you know, basically says that we look forward to maintaining it and building on it, but unfortunately no board members will be able to travel to Japan in November. Um, so looks good for you we can uh, we can send this out and if not we um, we're happy to make changes Move yes. approval. No. Uh, second okay and uh, I would just change the signatory I would actually put your name yeah. and that actually but other than that yeah but. yeah that I, I didn't know what direction we were going in so I figured that was a um, diplomatic way to end it but um, yes would um, my colleagues be amenable that for the second to last paragraph in the event that one or all of us hits the Powerball or something like that, that we say, unfortunately, at this time, due to the excessive well, cost of traffic. I think uh, they really need an answer. They don't, then don't yeah. put that in. Then none of us will be going. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. Mr. Mr. Greeley, do you have a hand? No. Uh, no. I mean, it, this is such much ado about nothing, but to them, crucially important. Uh, as you know, all of you were wonderful in terms of doing quite a reception, I feel, for them. 
What we have to be careful about, and I think Stephen's letter takes care of this, is that they don't read this as a political decision because of a political decision they made. So I support what Stephen has done 100% and thank him. And please, God, will the emails and letters to me stop from these people <laughs> after they receive your letter that none of the members of the Board of Selectmen are going? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as I say, it's crucial to them. So, yeah. and, and I'm so sorry I can. I went five years ago, but. The last time we looked, the flights were like seven thousand dollars. You know. Okay. Yes. It makes me wonder: should we actually add a sentence in that case that that says, "Please understand that this that that um, that this in no way reflects upon our um, uh, the way that we value the, the the exchange." You know, in that second to last paragraph, where Ms. Mahan noted it. Yeah, if you guys want. Um, just to underscore Mr. Greeley's point, and just in case something gets lost in translation. Okay. Um, something along uh, those lines. Please understand that that that. Um, just colleagues, do you want that change or? No opinion. Okay. Um, if you're comfortable with it, Mr. Chairman, I thought it's kind of in there, but I, I hear what Mr. Carroll is saying too. To um, yeah, okay, we can add that in if that's okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll um, we're going to send this out immediately, and I don't know if we actually need a vote. I think there's a motion on the floor. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so we have a motion. Was there a second to it? Second. second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Thank you very much. And finally, we do have some correspondence received um, regarding the removal of no parking signs on Jason Street. I believe Adam has a uh, quick comment on this. Yeah, so this is an issue similar to some emails that I, I've received and I uh, potentially several other board members have received uh, relating to some of tax recent recommendations, uh, but then also some recent enforcement of parking restrictions on Jason Street. So I've been discussing it with the police department as well with, uh, as with DPW to determine whether or not we can take down uh, some of the recently installed parking signs. I don't have an answer tonight, but I'd be happy for the board to refer this letter to me for further consideration. I think that's appropriate. If, um, Move to refer to the town manager. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Post five nothing. Am, am I right? This was part of the TAC recommendation to us, wasn't it? Not, not, not completely. No. Yeah, there's um, kind of a gray area in between. Um, yeah, let's give it to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> not gray street, gray area. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, the new business, Marion. 